everybody. Um, Instagram followers of uh, Jason Momoa News. It's Rachel Leshel here, and um, a bunch of you wrote in and had some questions for me. So I am going to start to tackle them. I'm going to start to tackle them right now. So let's uh, let's just dive in. So let's see. Uh, at Dave Gold One, at Dave Gold One, other than family, what makes you feel fulfilled? Well, that's a really good question. Other than family, what makes you feel fulfilled? Um, well, I love being in nature. I, uh, I love to write. Whenever I've completed a story, I feel deeply fulfilled by that. I love to um, make positive change in people's lives. So uh, whenever I'm able to do that in even the tiniest of ways, I feel super fulfilled. Um, I'm an actress and, and I love to act and whenever I get to sink my teeth into a really awesome character and do that character justice, I feel very fulfilled by that. Um, I've also kind of started editing little things and this is kind of like just like a, a funky kind of fun side note, but I'm actually really enjoying that as well. Um, that, make, that makes me feel, feel fulfilled. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, fulfillment, that kind of just boils down to, you know, at the end of the day, uh, at the end of the day, have I, have, am I a little bit better than I was the day before? Um, have I affected positive change, um, in the lives of others? Even, even in the lives of those people who I hold dear, especially those ones, my children, um, and if I have, then, then awesome sauce. So yeah, so let's see, so that's my writing, that's my um, uh, philanthropic work, that's just me as a person, being in nature, um, and, uh, and working as an actress. Those are all things that fulfill me. I could probably come up with a huge laundry list, but that was an awesome question, Dave. And I'm gonna move on now, or I'll just keep rambling. Let's see, so at um, Vice Ad, oh, I'm gonna butcher this. Vice Ad Mira, Mirlarker? Oh God, I totally butchered that. Let's just say at Vice, and I'm so sorry for butchering the rest of it. But here's your question. How often do you see the old cast members from Stargate and get to catch up? Well, the truth is these days, not that much. Um, I'm now living in Georgia, and um, most of my castmates either live in Canada, Vancouver, Toronto, or Los Angeles, so I'm kind of far. Um, I get to see folks these days when I go to conventions. So not only am I connecting with my fans, but I'm getting to see my fellow castmates who, you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's years that go by these days. Um, that we don't get a chance to see each other. We used to see each other a lot more um, back when I lived in Los Angeles, but um, I haven't actually seen Jason uh, and been, you know, and actually had a chance to talk to him in the same room for two years now. Yeah, probably like two and a half years. And uh, so it's, 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 it's few and far between just given the fact that we're, we're um, not as close physically as we used to be, but I reach out to everybody every so often via text or email just to say, hey, um, so we still have that, which is awesome. Okay, next question. Um, let's see, at Rach Dons 2000, I hope I said that correctly. I might have, I might have butchered it too. Did you ever suffer any serious injuries on uh, the SGA set? No. I never suffered any serious injuries. Um, I got hit once upon a time on the face with one of the Kali sticks during during some choreography, during a fight sequence, and my cheek swelled up, and so did my lips. Um, that wasn't fun, but I, it wasn't serious, so, you know, it was just some swelling and some bruising, and um, that went down in no time. I did have a pretty big fight sequence 
when I was pregnant with my son, and I hadn't told anybody at the time, um, except for Jewel. <laughs> I actually told her that day. She was the first person, um, other than a couple of riders who I had shared that with, and so most of the stunt performers, all the stunt performers didn't know, and, uh, and uh, I, I got kicked where I probably should not have been kicked. And that was, that was pretty serious for me, but happily it wasn't serious for any for anything else, and I was totally fine. But um, I, I didn't really suffer any major serious injuries, so that's a good thing. I did once upon a time punch Jason in the eye, and he suffered black eye, which he wasn't so keen on, uh, and I presented him with flowers the next day. So sorry. <laughs> which he took good-naturedly, so there you go. Let's move on. Um, so at Daz... Uh, Shermie, guys, you can laugh about this because I think I'm butchering everybody's, everybody's name. But you asked, would you, would you have liked it if Taylor had more opportunities to sing? Um, ah, you loved Beyond the Night. That is, that's awesome. I love to sing. I love to sing. I sing every single day to my babies and, and I love to sing. So, but here's a, here's a little story behind that particular episode, everybody teased me. Everybody teased me. David teased me relentlessly. Um, and uh, Paul, Paul was actually on set when I was singing. And every time uh, the drums started and everybody was looking very somber and I was about to sing, he would start to laugh. He would start to laugh. He couldn't control himself, his little shoulders I'm sorry, you didn't say little shoulders. I oh, ain't gonna take great offense. I didn't mean little shoulders. His broad shoulders would start to move up and down because he was trying to suppress a laugh. So I got teased relentlessly for the song, um, uh, which kind of sucked. So uh, probably once is enough, simply because the rest of my castmates weren't on board. Um, but I'm really glad that the song that I did get to sing was so impactful and um, that so many people enjoyed it. That's awesome. So how cool, how cool. The, the one and only one that I did was super impactful and then kind of dropped the mic and uh, let the guys make fun of someone else. <laughs> okay, next question. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. At Sarah, at Sarah Lu Lupescu, at Sarah Lupescu. Uh, did you get to keep any photos or anything from the set of Atlantis after the last episode? I wish I had. I wish I had been more savvy and back. And if I if I could go back, I would have raided my wardrobe, which was promised to me. They said you'll get everything, Rachel. Don't worry, it's yours. Take whatever you want. And I didn't get any of it. Um, I didn't get anything. Jason, however, was much more savvy than I was and um, <laughs> had, a, had a big old bag, I'm not even kidding, and kind of shoved <laughs> everything that he could into the big old bag um, as memorabilia. And I wish I had done that, but I tend to be too nice. I was too nice. So I didn't get anything. I have since, at conventions, been gifted back some of my um, wardrobe pieces which is great. So I've got a closet full of some of the things that I absolutely loved, which were meant to be for me, um, which were then auctioned off, uh, given back to me. So thank you. You guys know who you are. Thank you for giving those back to me. I really appreciate it. And actually, Jason stole um, the back of my chair that said, you know, my name and Taylor on it. It just kind of disappeared on the last day of filming. And I didn't see it for years. <laughs> And then like two years after we finished shooting, uh, he coughed up the fact that he had actually stolen it. So he gave it back to me. So I have that. I have that. So I'm slowly getting things back. Um, maybe somebody else stole something from set and I might get that back too. But um, I was too nice and I didn't get a damn thing. So there you go. Don't play nice. Next question. Um, okay, so at... Um, Moonbell, Moonball, 33. Before you and Jason became good family friends, 
Were you ever initially attracted to him? Oh, guys, that is a powder keg of a question. That's a powder keg. Um, was I ever attracted to Jason? Jason's a beautiful man. Let me just say that. Jason is a beautiful man. And um, I'm going to, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll just leave it at that. We never, we never, we never, we never had anything. I love Jason, and um, I have always loved working with him. I love hanging out with him. Um, I will always hold a place for him in my heart because he's a very uh, unique and incredible and uh, deeply caring human being. So there you go. I know you all want to be like, ah, come on, come on. But that's all I'm going to give you. Next. Let's see. Okay, so at Stargate Lover, um, who, okay, with whom do you see Taylor having a relationship with, John or Ronan? This is the question. I always get this question. And you know what? They, there are arguments for both. There are arguments for both. Um, who do I see them with? Who do I see her with, rather? Who do I see everybody together with at the end? Um, I hasten to say, I kind of like leaving it as a bit of a mystery. Is that bad? I kind of like leaving it as a bit of a mystery. Let's just say that, um, that it easily could have gone either way for many, many reasons. Cough out. Next question. Um, ba, 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 ba. Oops. Okay, my screen is disappearing on me. Okay, so at Carolyn Walsh, one, two, three. Who was the bigger prankster on set, Joe or Jason? The two of them together, kind of in combo, was a very bad combination because they played off of each other and uh, they encouraged each other. And I think um, Joe loved that because that enabled him to be, you know, he just was able to let out his really, really playful side <laughs> um, with Jason. So it was kind of sweet on the one hand to see, and on the other hand, it was, um, it was a little bit, I'm not going to say intimidating, but you had to kind of watch your back, that's all. Um, I will say that, that Jason, Jason uh, was very mischievous, and um, yeah, he was just, he was just mischief, mischief and fun, uh, which is, which is awesome, <laughs> which is awesome to work with because, you know, who wants to be around people who are all kind of dour and serious? You, you want to be around a little bit of frivolity. So I'll just say that the two of them together played off of each other and they really enjoyed that. They really enjoyed that. And, um, and I was, I was the, I was the recipient of a lot of that because, um, tend to be very gullible. I, I have forever asked friends of mine who've known me for 20 years and they'll be like, yeah, that's Rachel. So I'm, I'm an easy target. I'm an easy target. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I think this is the last question. Okay. At Voss 1919. Um, I like that 1919 because I was born on January the 19th. So that's a lucky number for me. 1919. Rachel, do you feel like you were a Viking or a nomad in another life? What an interesting question. Um, I, yeah, yeah, da, was I a Viking in another life? I will say this, um, the history of my maiden name, Luttrell, kind of, it doesn't, uh, kind of, it's not kind of, d um, comes from um, the Nords and uh, the Vikings. That's, that's like way back in, in the history so of my family and of my lineage. So um, Rachel, me, um, made up of, you know, what I am made up of, I, I, I have that in, in who, who I am and my makeup. And um, I don't know, in, in a past life, in a past life, why not? Why not? I have a feeling that... Um, that uh, that could be a possibility. That could be a possibility. It's certainly in my ancestry, so why the heck not? Alrighty, 
Let's see if there's another question. Uh, that's it. Whew. Thank you for sticking with me. That was a lot. Thank you for those awesome questions. I hope that, um, that I got to the bottom of most of them for you. I really do appreciate it. And uh, yeah.